Oh, girl. Amen. Amen. Your life. Amen. Amen. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Our Father, in Jesus' name, we honor you, Lord Jesus, this day. We thank you, Father, for an opportunity to gather in your name with your children to bless and to glorify you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you for your provision. We thank you for another day that we can yes. praise you, Lord. We ask, Lord Jesus, that as Pastor Dan shares the word that you have given him, that he will share it, Lord Jesus, with the anointing and the power in which you have given it to him, Lord Jesus. We pray, Lord, that as he decreased, that you would increase in him, that you will anoint and that you will strengthen him for the word. Open up the ears and the hearts of all of your children to receive from you this day. In Jesus' mighty name, we bless and praise you. Amen. 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 Thank you. Hey, man, uh, don't worry, baby. I'm not going to move at all. Once it's set, I'm not moving. Okay. Amen. Come over here and do it, Rick. Amen. Pastor Drew tried to do it, but I keep messing it up. Hey, man, good morning, everybody. God bless you in the name of Jesus. I am elated to be here. And all that God has done so far just on today, it is a blessing to be in your presence. I'm asking that you keep me lifted up in prayer as I try to deliver this message, which is crucially important amen. amen it's um it uh it came directly from god whether you accept it or not that's not my problem uh but i'm gonna deliver it the way he gave it to me and what you do with it after that that's on you amen i want to thank god uh i really want to thank god for pastor sandy amen. i do because god needed somebody to get this thing going Right. Even though it wasn't all going to be on him, he still needed somebody to talk to. Yeah. And he knew if he spoke to Sandy, Sandy would be obedient. Amen. And there are a lot of people that have been blessed Amen. because of your walk, because of your struggle, because of your obedience. Amen. And whether people I know you hear it all the time, but it's nothing like hearing it from home. Amen. 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 So I just want to give Pastor Sandy a hand of praise. The Bible says honor to whom honor is due and tribute to whom tribute is due. And I think he's due a little tribute and a little bit of honor. Amen. All right. Amen. So before we go on, I want to I want to thank Lorraine Jackson uh, for loving and supporting S4C and her family. We've got you in our prayers. and We're praying for you. We had an awesome prayer this morning. Uh, we prayed for the house first and then we prayed online and we've been praying all morning and it is just the best thing ever. God met us here incredibly and God showed up as he does and he showed out. Um, this message is very, 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 very important. The, sub, the title of this message is warning Amen. to all, no, to false teachers and preachers. Amen. I'm going to read the last thing he gave me first. He said to, uh, to all teachers and preachers, and he told me to write it in big letters and show it on the camera. Wow. Anybody see it? Can y'all see that? Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. wow. He told me to write it in big letters, write it in red, and show it on camera. Yeah. So let me show the camera. Can you think, can the camera see this? So in case your English is, is your second language, let me read it to you. To all teachers and preachers, you better make sure you were called. Amen. He says, whether you are, whether you are ministering on YouTube, in a church, a Bible study group, online, in person or on the street. Yes. I think that just about covers everybody. Because you got people running around here calling themselves ministers of the gospel and poisoning right. the children that God have died for. Yes. And he says, you better make sure you claiming to be a teacher and a preacher. You better make sure I called you. Amen. Because as you well know, well, those of us here know. But if you don't know, let me let me break it down to you. For those that call them, for those that are ministers and teachers, you will be judged by a much higher standard than those that are not. You call yourself a preacher. You say that God called you. You say that God spoke to you and told you to do. You better make sure that he told you to do that, because if he didn't and you going out poisoning and killing God's people, you got to pay. 
Yeah. And if it's a much, if you are graded or you are held to a much higher standard, you will also be punished at a much greater standard. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. You can't just run around, oh, YouTube, oh, I can just call myself a minister. Nobody will know. Oh, somebody will know. Yeah. Somebody, the, somebody's going to know. So if you call yourself a minister or a preacher or a prophet or whatever you call yourself, you better make sure God called you. Because if you didn't, this message is for you. Amen. 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 All right. Now, that's how the message is supposed to flow. Y'all still with me? Yeah. All right. So let's get cracking. Let's go to Acts 19, 11 through 17. What an awesome prayer this morning. I mean, the whole prayer service was just, was it crazy? Yeah. It was crazy. And I, I'm just, before I left home, I said, Lord, there's only one or two people that ask for prayer. What's wrong with these people? And then I get to church and I got 20 minutes worth of people praying for. So it wasn't what I thought. But I'm telling you, we don't charge by the word. We don't charge by the minute. If you got a prayer request, you need to get it to us. We are our job is to we've been doing this for we've been doing this for 15 years. You we just start doing it with you. We've been doing this for 15 years. We don't charge for prayer. We do this. And so if you need prayer for not just you, your family, your loved ones, the bill collector, the person that came and turned your gas off this morning, if you need prayer, let us know. We'll pray for you. We don't, we, we, we're in this because we were commissioned to do this. We're not in this for money. We're not in this for fame. And we're not in this for popularity. We're in this because God told us to do it. And if you want to take advantage of it in this last moment that we're here, you better get busy. Amen. Amen. So now let's, let's go right into the message. Acts 19, 11 through 17. Is everybody there? As you know, I, I go through and I, I read different versions that will give me the best interpretation of what God has spoken to me to speak to you. That's okay? And so if this doesn't say verbatim what yours is written, try another version. It's pro you'll, you'll find it sooner or later. But this is how the Lord gave it to me. So uh, in Acts 19, verse number 11, and God was doing extraordinary miracles by the hands of Paul. Okay, he didn't say Paul was some supernatural super superhero and he's got all the juice. God was doing it through him. So don't get it twisted. God uses Pastor Sandy. God uses me. God uses his people. So it's not from me. It's just from God through me. Amen. 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 Did I say that right? Yes. All right. So. Uh, and God was doing extraordinary miracles by the hands of Paul. Another version says God continued to do extraordinary miracles through Paul. Y'all know who Paul is, right? So I don't have to go through who Paul is. You guys know. All right. Now, can I get a quick switch to Acts 5 and 12? Real quick. Somebody say amen when you get there. Can I get one? Amen. I hear pages turn in. Amen. And by the hands of the apostles, this is just a backup scripture to back up what I'm reading. OK. Uh, and by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And I said Solomon's porch. Now, I've heard that before, but I really wanted to know what was up with Solomon's porch. You know, if God thought enough to have it mentioned in the scripture, there must be a there must be a reason for that. Right. So I looked up Solomon's porch and here's what I got. What was Solomon's porch? Solomon's porch was the name of two porches associated with the temple in Jerusalem. Remember, the temple burnt down. It was destroyed twice. The original temple, which was constructed by King Solomon. You can look that up in First Kings uh, six, two and three. And the reconstructed temple, which was also destroyed on the day of Av, right? Uh, you're right. Both on the day of Av. Uh, the reconstructed temple was later modified by King Herod, and it included an area also known as Solomon's Porch. It included an area which was also known as Solomon's Porch. You can find, well, yeah, Solomon's Porch. This structure was on the east side of the temple and was covered with a roof. So it wasn't, it wasn't a house or an apartment, or it was a structure that had a roof to protect them from the weather. Okay, that's, that's what it was for. Peter 
and John had healed a lame man at Solomon's porch and preached at a, uh, at a large crowd that gathered there. So you got an idea of what Solomon's porch is. So when I mention it in scripture, you'll already have an idea what that is, right? Okay, all right, so now, zzz, let's go back uh, to Acts 19, verse number 12. Anybody there? Amen. Don't tell me y'all done skip, y'all done move, y'all done try. What's wrong with you people? Y'all new here, huh? Okay, ready? So, verse number 12, so that even, okay, 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 let me go back to number 11. God continued to do extraordinary miracles through Paul. Verse number 12, so that even face cloths or work aprons that had touched his skin, Paul, you follow me? That had touched his skin were brought to the sick and the diseased and the diseases left them, and evils and the evil spirits came out of them. Anybody remember back in the day when they used to have prayer cloths and they you and then all of a sudden they, they start selling them for fifteen ninety five. You can have a prayer cloth too, and then they got real ignorant and start selling water. They pour water out the tap, put it in a cup, and you can have this holy water for twenty nine ninety five. And so it got to be so bad that so pastors just stopped doing it because you know they just tainted and messed up everything. But God was working such miracles through Paul. And Paul wasn't the only one who was working miracles through, but this is what we're talking about now. It was working miracles to the point where even the claws, the prayer claws, that because of the anointing that was on him, even that as long as it touched him because, he was, because the presence of God was on him, uh, they could give it to the sick and the sick would recover. It's not that the diseases or the sickness recognize the cloth. It recognized the spirit that 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 accompanied the cloth. Y'all with me? So it's not. It wasn't the material. It was what the material represented. OK, Amen. we are not selling you a prayer cloth for twenty five ninety five. So don't write us and ask for any. I can send you a talit if you don't have any, but you're going to have to pray over it. Okay? We good? Because I don't, I, don't I don't want people to get twisted. Oh, let me call. Let me see if I can get a prayer call. We, we, we don't do that right now. I'm not saying anything wrong with it. I'm just saying we don't do it. Amen? Okay. So, here's another version. And so that even face cloths or work aprons that had touched his skin were brought to the sick and the disease left them and the evil spirits came out of them because God was doing something. And listen, I because God is the same yesterday, today and forever. Is that right? Does your Bible say something like that? God is the same yesterday, today and forever. And so if God was doing that at that time, I believe God is still doing it today. I believe that. Well, that was way back in the day. Well, so was God, but he's still here. Amen. 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 And so I truly believe that God is still working. And I'll give you a for instance. You guys know Natalie and Florin or yeah. Joe. Yeah. Right. They, they're from Atlanta. Where's Nikki? Yeah, Atlanta. Atlanta. OK, so they his Florin is his wife. And so you just surprised. I remember them names. huh? Right. Amen. So they came. The Lord sent them here. They came to church. They became family. We pray with them, for them, and over them. The Lord told me to give them my talit, the big one. And I, I gave the big one to Florin. And I gave the little one, the one I hadn't opened, hadn't touched, hadn't prayed for, to his wife. The big talit is the one that I used to use all the time. Tahira told me why the Lord did that. And, and the little one is the one that I buy and I, I pass out. So when they got back to Atlanta, they had been praying and, and all that and going through and dealing. Florin could feel the presence of the Lord when he was wearing the tallit. His wife got the tallit from him because she said she wasn't feeling anything in the one that I gave her. She put the tallit on and started wearing it and the Lord just did stuff. That's just to back up this, that God is still. And then a few weeks ago, maybe, la maybe in the last year, Pastor Tear, she said, we, we're talking about that, and I don't even know how it got started, but she said, because it's a personal garment. Yeah. Ah, I remember, you remember now, don't you? 
She said, it's because it's a personal garment. I use that garment to pray over God's people. That was anointed. It was full. It was the experience and the presence of God is in that. And so that's why she was able to feel the presence of God with that to lead and not with the other one. Amen. Is that deep? Amen. I said, oh, the Lord used me for something. Yay. <laughs> Yay. The Lord used me for something. Amen. So, and so I'm, I'm saying that to say that God still moves. God still works. Prayer still works. God is not kidding. He, was the, he is the same God that wrote the scripture, even though he let, you, he let others pin it. He wrote it. Yeah. Got it? Yeah. Somebody else pinned it. Yeah. But he wrote it. Amen. Get that. Get that. He is him. Are they OK, uh, Isabel? God wrote the scripture and God has not changed his mind. And everything that God says was then it's still now until God says different. Amen. Amen. So when God says you better make sure that I called you and you didn't call you, you better make sure. That God is the one that told you to speak and preach because these are, I'm very protective about my kids. Yes. I'm very, I, I kill a brick for them girls. Uh -huh. Oh, I heard a brick. Amen. Because them my kids. Okay? Hopefully you feel the same way about yours. Amen. God is a parent. What do you think he feel about his kids? Amen. Some fake Walking around claiming that I'm a minister of the gospel when God didn't call them, feeding you a glass full of milk with a little bit of poison in it. <laughs> feeding you cookies with razor blades. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. You don't think God is protective of his kids? And so you going around poisoning the children of God, pretending to be called by God, and you don't think that God is going to address that issue you got another thought coming you you want to open a church because you want money you want to open a church because you want to be popular you want to open a church because you are satanic you want to open a church because for whatever reason whether it's online bible study, whatever you're doing and you're slapping god's name on it and he didn't tell you to do it you you need to repent while you still can Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. Just because Paul was doing it, don't give you the right to do it. Yeah. Just because the other apostles were doing it, it doesn't give you a right to do it. Just because you see Pastor Sandy and I up here doing it, it doesn't automatically give you the right to do it. Just be, the Bible says all things are lawful but not expedient. Just because the state of California said you can do it, it don't mean that God said you can do it. Yeah. It's okay in California, it's okay to be gay. It ain't okay with God for you to be gay, but in California, it's okay to be gay. Yeah. Just because you're big enough to do it don't mean you ought to do it. Right. Amen. Amen. Amen? All right, so let's move on. Did I, I read 12, right? Yeah. All right, so it was, okay, amen. Um, oh, no, 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 there's more. Okay, so here's another version of 12. So that even face claw, look at the enemy out there, got the alarm going, trying to distract me, lying dog. Amen, we're going to preach anyway. So that even face clothes or work aprons that had touched his skin were brought to the sick and the disease and the disease left them and the evil spirit came out of there. Now, somebody go to Matthew 424. Real quick, Matthew 424. This is something else to back this up. If somebody say amen, I can move on. Amen. News about him spread all over Syria. And people brought to him all who were ill with, with various diseases, those suffering acute pain, the demon possessed, those having seizures, and the paralyzed. And he healed them. God is still in the healing business. Yes, He's still in there. God has not changed his mind. But people think that... The lie got out that that's Old Testament. That's old school. God don't do that anymore. That's a lie. God still heals. No matter what's going on, God will still heal you. He will still deliver you. God will fix you up. Amen. Just because they said it don't mean it's true. 
Just because CNN keeps saying it, it don't mean it's true. It don't make it gospel. Yeah. Amen. Just because you keep hearing it on YouTube, that don't make it right. Yeah. Amen. That just makes it popular. Right. Amen. Right or wrong, it just makes them popular. If God said it, it's still happening. God has not changed. Your atmosphere may change, your surroundings may change, but God does not change. So if God says, I will heal you, I will heal you. If he says, I will provide, I will provide. If I'll do, I'll do. God, I'm trying to help you to understand God does not change. He does not change his mind and he's serious about his kids. And if you need your father, you need to talk to your father or come to somebody that can. Amen. 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 We pray for people all over the world online. And we've been getting testimonies back Amen. of people being healed. Amen. 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 People be. I, yeah. We've been getting testimonies back. People being healed and delivered from online. And they didn't listen to it live. They listened to it later. Yeah. One lady said she had she had sent a request in or she had asked about or, uh, us to pray. We prayed online. She's walking from her kitchen, walked in the front room, happened to hear me praying and calling out what she had asked God to what she had asked for prayer for. And she said and she just almost fell out. And she said it blessed her right then. Yes. Amen. God still does it. He still moves. He still does what he said he's doing. God has not changed. He hasn't. Just because you're not with the program, that don't mean God's changed. Amen. Maybe it's your faith that's lacking. Maybe you have fallen out of relationship with God, which is why you don't believe. Maybe you were never a believer in the first place. Maybe that's why. What, whatever your circumstance is, don't blame God because you changed. Amen. Amen. Don't don't blame God because you got off the boat. Don't blame God because his word still stands and you want a fresh anointing. <laughs> you want a new word. You ain't got the old one yet. Amen. You go back and get them first and then come up to a fresh anointing Amen. Uh, and see what happens then. Amen. 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 All right. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Amen. Uh, uh, Acts 5 and 15. Somebody go there. Acts 5 and 15. Amen. Somebody say something when you get there. Okay, so y'all know what I read in, in, in Mark, right? Okay, so in Acts 5, 15, as a result, people brought the sick into the street and people brought the sick into the street, laid hands on them, on cot, they brought them in cots and mats so that at least Peter's, oh, and this one's talking about Peter, at least Peter's shadow. At least he, because the word of God was so in them and on them. And me, he, he don't even have to touch me. He, maybe the shadow. The woman, she touched God's talit, yeah. the zitzi. Uh -huh. And she was made sozo, complete mind, body, spirit. She didn't even touch Christ. She just touched what we read, the hem of his garment, it was actually the zitzi uh -huh. that she touched. And she was completely healed. Mentally, spiritually, physically, it was over. It was done. And here's the thing. He knew that somebody touched him. Yeah. The apostle said, how do you, what makes, what do you mean, who touched me? That's a, that's a thousand people here. He said, uh-uh. This person touched me and I was affected. I, I felt my strength come out and go into the see God is God God is in touch with when you touch God God feels it yes. Yes. God is in touch with his people yes. if you reach out to God God will touch you yes. amen. amen I'm talking about real people of God we're gonna get to the fakes in a minute yeah. I'm talking about real people of God. Right. And so they just wanted to be in the shadow of Peter. That's how powerful the word of God was working through his people. Amen. Does God have people today? Yes. Does God have people today? Yes. Is God working out of people today? Y'all yes. don't say it like you mean it. Does God have people today? Yes. Has God changed? No. Does God love Peter more than he loves us? No. Are you sure? Yes. Then some of that ought to be happening now, shouldn't it? Yeah. Maybe it's just not happening where you live. Yes. It ain't God. Come on. Amen. Amen. 
it ain't God. You better check yourself before you wreck yourself. Now, let's go back to Acts 19 and 13. Amen. Amen. It has been a full day already. <laughs> it's been a full day already. Amen. Ooh, it's hot up here, ain't it hot? Just, you, Just me. Yeah. Can I take this jacket off? Stay high. Stay high. <laughs> 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 Woo! Hey, man, I'm going to take this jacket off. Hey, man, Nikki, come up here and help me. I'm going to take this jacket off because it's hot up here. Hey, man, he, he ain't supposed to be taking no jacket off. Mind your business. Right. Hey, man, mind your business. Mind your business. When you get up here, then we'll say something about you. Hey, man, all right. We good now? Amen. All right. Amen. So now, oh yeah, this is much better now. Amen. Going through the change. All right. Verse number 13. Verse number 13. Y'all there? Yes. 19 verse 13. Uh, ver uh, let's see. Uh, chapter 19 verse 13. Uh, Acts. I'm sorry. Acts 19 and 13. Uh, the, the primary scriptures are Acts 19, 11 through 17, but I'm going to be jumping off into backup scriptures and then I'm going back to Acts. OK, so right now I'm in Acts 19, 13. Some Jews now, 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 check this out. Some of the Jews, it didn't say some of the Jews that were following Christ. Some of the Jews who saw what was going on with Peter and Paul and all the other disciples and they're like, Hmm, that looks pretty good. I, I think I might be able to handle that. Yeah. Okay, y'all follow me so far? Okay, so some Jews who went around driving out uh, uh, evil spirits tried to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who were demon-possessed. They would say, in the name of the Jesus whom Paul preached. Not in the name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in the name of the Jesus that sad man preaches, I'm telling you to go away from here. <laughs> You're going to get good after a while. So I don't actually have a relationship with, okay, first of all, these were, uh, uh, these were exorcists, mm -hmm. these guys. These, these, these were not followers of Christ. These were exorcists, and so they would go out and, and cast out evil spirits by incantations and by sorcery. And I'm gonna, what? Exorcist, a person who expels or attempts to expel an evil spirit from a person or a place using spells. Yeah. So that ain't got nothing to do with us. This is all witchcraft that they're using, okay? So that's what an exorcist is. A person who expels or attempts to expel an evil spirit uh, from a person or a place using spells and incantations. What is an incantation? A series of words said as a magic spell or charm. Uh, what is a magic charm? A charm is a magic spell or an object that brings luck. Now, you know, believers don't operate out of luck. Amen. Just so you know. Oh, today was my lucky day. Do you believe in Jesus? I believe in Jesus Christ, but you ain't got no, you don't deal with, God don't deal with luck. God does not operate in luck. Luck is of the world and it is, I believe, it's witchcraft myself to Amen. even to follow that and try to embrace that. I think that's witchcraft because it's not of God. And if it's not of God and it's operating like this, it's against God. It's got to be witchcraft. Amen. But that's just that's being five and eight. Amen. So again, magic charms. A charm is a magical spell or an object that brings luck. A spell of a witch that enhances, that entices, no, that entrances you is a charm. They have those, like yoga, mm -hmm. like crabs. <laughs> and you see them doing one of these numbers, and they do another, that, and they tell, hum, hum, shiga, diga, waga, whom hot dogs in the elevator, you know, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Mm, she coming a Honda. You know, that, that's not God. Those are spells and incantations and witchcraft. And, 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 then, and you say it over and over and over and over to invoke the spirit, to call, to summon those demons into your atmosphere. If you're in yoga, get out. If you're in a church that's having yoga, get out of the church. Yes. 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 Amen. Because it is nothing but witchcraft. Yes. And you see hundreds of them laid out at the beach. 
जस हम देगी 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 हम 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 हुशाया काया which crap ooh shake 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 that all kind of madness it's witchcraft it's not of god and so these exorcists were going and talking to their fellow demons enticing and telling them you know in peter's god's name come out of there wow jesus amen can you imagine me coming up somebody coming up here for prayer and I say in Tahira's name and her Jesus name you better get on up out of here. People look at you like where the oil. Right. Amen. Okay, but that was a, that was an exercise and no doubt they got paid for it. Yes. No doubt they got paid cuz they're not doing it out of the kindness of their heart. They're doing it because they that, that it's a, so they thought huh? It's a paid job. Yeah, it's a, it's a job. Just like this, you know, Get your something, call on this phone line. You, yeah, call me now, call me now. And we can tell your, what is it? Horoscope. The horoscope, that's it. Let me tell you, let me tell you something. If you're dealing with horoscopes and I'm a cancer, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Pisces, I'm a buzzard, a turkey, whatever you claim, you need to get out of that mess. That ain't got nothing to do with God. That is absolutely, positively witchcraft. You are not a donkey. That, 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 that ain't got nothing to do with you. The Metzoroff was created to tell the story about Jesus Christ. God wasn't thinking about your birthday when he created the Metzor off. And if you are a member of the body of Christ and you, and you, oh, what's your, what's your, what's your, what, what, what they call it? What's your, what, what's your sign? The cross, that's my sign. My sign is the cross, what's yours? Amen. Don't get, it's witchcraft. They're trying to trip you out. Call and get your horoscope. You better leave them demons alone. Amen. Yes. Amen. They to put some hooju on you and you don't know what's happening. Exactly. Amen. Amen. Witchcraft is real. Yes. Spells, incantations are real. Yes. Demons are real. Yes. But they want you to think it's not real so they can operate freely because you don't think they're real in the first place. Call them out, lying, stinking, good for nothing, low life demons. Now, <coughs> that's just my take on them. Amen. Now, here's a word that's going to be used, but I need you to know what it means. Adjure, A-D-J-U-R-E. And I hope I'm saying that right. Adjure. And that means is a heavy duty synonym of the word ask with more of a demanding tone. So those, uh, those soothsayers, those exorcist guys, they were speaking to the demons in that manner. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. They're saying it with feeling, because uh, you know, in his name, it, in, according to Sandy's God, you know you need to get up out of here. That's exactly what it was. Uh, verse number, can I have a, a boogie towel? Anybody? Oh, thank you. Amen. <laughs> Stop laughing, Abigail. She don't want to call him that. Okay. Verse number 14. Y'all still with me? Yeah. But there were, oh, oh, so, but there were seven sons of a man who was a Jew and a chief priest whose name was, I think it was named Skeva. Skeva. Thank you. Man, I struggled with that word for a minute. Skiva, who were doing this? So these, uh, the son, the, these, these cats were doing this, the, the sons of Skiva. Or oh, here's another verse. Here's another, here's another interpretation. Now seven sons of a man named Skiva, a Jewish high priest, were doing this. Y'all follow me? Y'all with me? Okay. Verse number 15. <laughs> One day. And let me tell you, you jack leg preachers and teachers, one day this going to happen to you or some form of it. You watch. You claim God called you and you know you're a lying dog. One day something going to happen to you. OK, so verse number 15, one day the eve. Oh, oh OK. So oh, uh, that's OK. One day the evil spirit answered him. Jesus, I know. Paul I know but who are you one day you're going to meet up with the right demon 
And they're going to say, I, I know Paul. I know Sandy. I even know Ben. I'll never met you. You trying to cast me out and I, I don't even know you? I'm not scared of you. You plant somewhere in the Bible, and I, I was going to look it up, and I got distracted and forgot. Somewhere in the Bible, the angels, or maybe it was in the book of Enoch, I forget. The, an angel was telling, telling one of the apostles, one of the you don't, you, you're dealing with stuff, with things you know nothing about. You're, yeah. We're calling on spirits and talking, talking yang. And angels say, you don't know nothing about the realm that you're talking about. Yeah. I wish I could remember that. I wish I could remember where that was. We're, we're calling on things. This he wasn't talking to. You're calling on things and you're bad mouthing things and you don't even know what it is. These are things in the spirit realm that you're trying to be, you know, aggressive with. You don't know what kind of spirit you're dealing with. You don't know what's in that spirit realm. You've never been there. I've been in heaven, the spirit realm, and here. I know what's going on. You don't know. And you talking all this big talk about stuff. They talking all this yak to the spirit that didn't even know them. So if it didn't know them, because it knew Jesus. When Jesus walked in, Jesus, are you about to, uh, it was scared and, oh, Jesus, are you about to send us back before our time? They know who, they know who's righteous and they know who worked for them. Amen. 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 And so he's like, I don't know you. You up here trying to get, you know, uh, I'm working and you acting like you my boss. You don't sign no checks up in here. I don't know you. I don't have to listen to you. And God made, well, amen. Here's another version of that, another version of 15. But one time when they were, when they tried it, the evil spirit replied, I know Jesus and I know Paul, but who are you? One more version. But the evil spirit answered them, Jesus, I know Paul, I recognize, but who are you? They didn't even recognize this cat existed. They didn't recognize that you were born. Amen. So they're going to go up and try to cast an evil spirit using their cantations and their spells and their black magic and their witchcraft. Uh, the, the, get, the guy that, that turned into a pastor who used to be demonic, not the one from us, but his, uh, about 20 years ago, and his YouTubes are, you know, if I told you his name, you know. Yes. He said, Somebody sent him to a Christian's house to put a, put a spell or something on them. I'm pretty sure it was him. Yeah, yeah, okay. And he said, he went back and told him, don't you ever send me to another Christian's house again. John yes, John Ramirez. He said, don't you, whoever sent him, he went back to who sent him. Don't you ever send me to another Christian's house again. He said when he walked up to the door, the praise music was gone and they were all up in Christ and they could feel the presence of God before when they opened the door. He said, he said they left, they never went back. When they tried to pray over Christian assemblies, they had no power whatsoever. They had to walk away because there was no power whatsoever. They couldn't affect that Christian assembly by any means. Yeah. Those are real Christians. Yeah. But now you got these jack leg Christians here. Well, they didn't want any Christians there. They're going to try to. Don't let everybody lay hands on you. Right. Yeah. Just because they say they're a prayer warrior, just because they say they're anointed, just because they say they got something. Oh, they got something. The Bible says know them by their fruit. Yeah. If they're saying one thing and their fruit says something else, I'm good. Pray for me at home. Yeah. Don't touch me. I don't let everybody touch me. Don't. Mm -mm, nope. I'm good. I'm straight. Now, if the Lord, if, if I feel the presence of God in you, we straight. But you coming up here and I'm, no, I'm good. I'm good. I, <laughs> Amen. All right. I'm going to move on. <laughs> Amen. I'm almost finished. But I know. Verse number 16. Because he wanted this specific message to go out. He wanted this specific point to be made. Because even though it doesn't apply prayerfully in this house, Amen. it applies somewhere. Yes. 
I know you, you've heard a jack leg preacher somewhere. What's jack leg? False, fake, good for nothing, lying, demon, stinking dog. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a jack leg. All of that. All of that. Amen. And if you know one, stay away from them. They mean you no good. Amen. Amen. Some of us came from churches with those kind of preachers. Amen. I mean, I know I did. Amen. Verse number six. <laughs> Jack was sitting there bouncing. It's true. A lot of us, some of y'all still in them. You need to recognize and get out. Amen. Verse number 16. Then the man who had the evil spirit, then the man who had the evil spirit, the man who had the evil spirit, jumped on them and overpowered them all. <laughs> Whatever was motivating this cat told him, get him. <laughs> get him. You want to come out here in front, in front of all your friends and all your buddies? You want to put on a show, make somebody think you got something? Get him. And God let it happen. That day is coming. Oh, it's coming. You think that you're getting away with something now, but your day is coming. You want to lie on God? You want to lie to his people? You want to collect money? You want to be a big this and a big that? You think you're untouchable? Something will touch you in a little while. Amen? And you ain't going to like it. Nothing is out of God's reach. Nothing and nobody. Amen? Okay, so... So, 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 and overpowered them all. He gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. Wow. Gave them such a beating. They over there trying to lay hands on, whom shabba la laga, whom shabba la laga. And he's like, don't be spitting on me. <laughs> and he got them. Come over here hocking and spitting and calling out, trying to tell somebody to come out. Who you think you are? I don't know you. Amen. Amen. So now you shake and bake preachers. You, you, <laughs> you preachers that think that nobody can stop you. Nobody can. God's got something that's going to put you in check. Either here or when you meet him. Yeah. Something's going to get a hold to you unless you repent while you have a chance. Yeah. Because you can't play with God. You can't play with his people. God is serious about his bride. Yeah. I don't want nobody messing with my bride. Now, I can be upset with her. That's my prerogative. That's not yours. Mm -hmm. I can talk. You can't say nothing. That's mine right there. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. That, all, all that, the heels and all, that's all me. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. God's bride, you need to leave God's bride alone. Yeah. Yeah. If God didn't tell you, you need to let the bride go. Yes. Amen. Because it's coming to get you. Yeah. Amen. You like that, Abigail? She's funny. She just nodding her head. <laughs> Amen. All right, let me finish reading because I'm almost done up here. Another version of that. And the man in whom the evil spirit leaped and then uh, uh, leaped on them and subdued them all and overpowered them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. Verse number 17. The story of what happened spread quickly. <laughs> It couldn't just stay on the porch. It had to go all out in the yard. Yeah, all on the internet. People on their phone. Guess what happened? People texting and emailing and whatnot. Guess what just happened? I'm going to finish reading. What verse was that? Oh, yeah, 17. The story of what happened spread quickly. And all through Ephesus, to the Jews and the Greeks, not just to the Jews. This story was so good, I told everybody. I told everybody. God let that demon whoop the fool out of them. Embarrass them, 
hurt them, shame them. I bet they ain't never spoke again. I bet, I bet they went somewhere in the head. You ain't heard from them. I ain't heard from them yet. You can't. God will make an example out of you if that's what it takes. Yes. And not the good guy. God will make an example out of you because of your lifestyle. You lying on God. Saying that God sent you and you know you don't know God. Yes. What was that preacher that had been preaching? In Jim, not Jim Jones. What's that preacher that had been preaching so long and that said, he said he never read the Bible? And preaching to thousands of... Jim, Jim, Jimmy Swagger? No, Jimmy Baker, because he was in jail and he wrote a book. How are you going to preach for 10 years to hundreds of thousands of people and you never read the Bible? He's still, and now he's selling buckets of wheat or grass or beans or greens. Or what's he selling? He's selling a big old box of something for two hundred, two or three hundred dollars. He's selling your kit for the for the for the tribulation. It's tribulation food, and now he's selling tribulation food. He he. he <laughs> If he lived through it, never read the Bible, preaching to hundreds of thousands of people, making, raking in millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars, don't even know God and trying to, he said, he said, I think this is the part I, I read, he said that he would take script, he would take sermons from other pastors or preachers that came on his program, study those sermons and then recite them. Right. And how many of you used to follow that cat? And now he's selling buckets of beans for the, for the, for the what you call it? Tribulation. 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 One of our members, they're so funny, Pastor Sandy had mentioned that earlier this week or last week, and she said, hmm, we eating ours. We waiting on it. We ain't gonna be here, so we don't need it. She said, we eating ours. <laughs> we already she said, we used to be there, we left. We eating ours. We, we going up in the rapture. Amen. Amen. Of course, if you don't plan on going up in the rapture, then for $29.95, <laughs> call Jimmy, and I'm sure he can hook you up. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right, let's, uh, let's go to James 2.17 and 9.17. James 2.17. There's only two verses there. James 2.17. Amen. I believe this is relevant, but uh, uh, you let me know after a while. Somebody say amen so I can move on. Amen. In the same way, verse number 17, James 2, 17 through 19. In the same way, faith, oh, in the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. You can say you are a believer, a member of the body of Christ, and if there is no fruit on your tree, if there is no works on your tree to show that you are walking in Christ, then your speech is just dead weight. It means absolutely nothing. I'm going to say it again. If you claim you are a child of the living God and there is no works in your walk, there's no prayer life, there's no study in the scriptures to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. There's no mission, there's no ministry, to, there's nothing in your life that anybody can point to and say, yep, that's a believer. Then your work, your faith is dead. It means nothing. It is absolutely zilch. Because once you accept the truth, it is your responsibility as a believer to dive into the vineyard and work. Yes. It is your reasonable service to get up off your do nothing and go work to try to help save somebody like somebody was working and help save you. Amen. It is your responsibility. You don't pray for nobody. You don't read no scripture. You, you don't pray to God. Not anything worth remembering. You just do nothing. All you got is your lips saying that I'm a believer, but there is absolutely nothing that backs that up. The Bible says your works, your, your belief is dead. In other words, he doesn't accept it. God does not accept your lip service and there's no real service. Amen. Amen. You can holler all you saved all you want. If God can't find a piece of fruit on that tree, it's just a lot of words. 
Amen. You ain't got to say amen. Maybe you're guilty. I don't care. That's on you. <laughs> what? Did I say something? Amen. Let's go to verse number 18. Yea, a man will say, thou hast faith. I got faith. And I have works. He said, show me your faith apart from your work. In other words, how are you going to have faith and you don't exercise or execute your faith? You have, you have to put sneakers on your faith. You can't just say, I got it. You got to live like you got faith. You got to pray like you have faith. You have to trust God like you've got faith. You can't just say you have faith, but I don't, I don't see nothing, so he ain't, he, God ain't doing what he said. I ain't seen nothing yet. You've got to walk like you've got faith. When you was on welfare, and you know you was, when you was collecting them monthly checks, and you knew the check was coming on the third, you made your list out the month before. <laughs> because you knew on the third, I got a check. You didn't wait till the third to decide what you was going to do. That list was made out well before the third because it was spent by the fourth. <laughs> because you had planned it out because you knew it was coming. You had faith in that government check. Amen, somebody. Amen. Or that EPTSRI card they got. <laughs> You know on the first there's going to be some money on there. I can go get my kids something to eat. Amen. So you've been, you wrote a list out two weeks ago because you know I got something coming. I'm, I'm, I'm not bagging all that. I thank God. If you need it, thank God. At one point, I needed it. Thank God. I'm just saying I can't have more faith in the government system than I have in God. Amen. I believe that God, they owe me. Yeah. <laughs> But you can't believe, you can't trust in, all right, all right, all right. I'm just saying, now you mad, that, amen. Does anybody know what verse that was? <laughs> Y'all got me excited, I forgot where I was. That was 18, okay, here's another, here's another one. Uh, but some men, will, oh, I never did finish that one. And by my works uh, will show thee my faith. I'll show, by my works, I will prove that I am a follower of Christ. <laughs> When I walk into, uh, not me, but me too, but uh -huh. as a believer, when you walk into the atmosphere, yeah. something ought to change. Mm -hmm. When you walk in and they cussing up a storm, they're like, oh, dang, she here again. Mm -hmm. When you enter in a room, demons that are in that room, they're like, all right, let's see what she's going to say now. Oh, she rebuked us. She, he, hasn't, he hasn't ejected us. Okay, but let's walk light so they don't know we're here. Mm -hmm. When you are a believer of God, things have to change. Amen. It just got to, when it rain, if it rains on you, you're going to get wet. That's just the way it is. Uh -huh. yes. When the wind blows and you don't have anything covering you, you're going to feel the wet. Because that's just the way it is. When you are walking in Christ, you cannot hide that. And it will show up. And when you're claiming you're walking in Christ and you're not, that'll show up too. Yes. Gossip. Just diarrhea at the lips. Just Kate shut up. Just, I can't stop lying. I just can't stop gossiping. It's just my thing. It's just my thing. You and your thing going to hell. You want to make a God out of your mouth? That's the worst place to have a God. The Bible said that little chunk of meat is the, is the, it can, that little helm at the bottom of the ship controls that whole hundred ton ship. That one little piece guides the whole ship. Why did God put that in scripture? Because it's important. You let that chunk of meat in your head control your atmosphere. That one chunk of meat in that thick head of yours will cause you to go to hell because you won't shut up. Amen. Amen. I hope that don't affect you, but if it does, shame on you in the first place. Next time, don't be there. Amen. 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 I don't like it when he preached. I don't like it when you show up. So we even. <laughs> we was good till you got here. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Did I read 19? You believe 
that there is one God. Yes. Good. Even the demons believe that. Yes. And shudder. At least they shudder. Here's another version of that. I love this. I love this verse. You say you have faith, for you believe that there is one God. Good for you. Even the demons believe this, and they tremble in terror. See, you so bad, you don't even tremble when they talk about God in your presence. You so, you so, you, you, you such a mag daddy until nothing affects you. I believe in God. Good for you. Where are your works that show that you believe in God? Demons believe in God, but here's the difference between you and them. They know God is real. You think God is Santa Claus. Amen. You think God is the Easter Bunny, just something that they made up along the way. You think the white man wrote the Bible, and so it ain't really real. See, the difference between you and the demonic spirits that tremble when they hear the word of God or when they're, when the, they, they know it's real. They know what's on the other side. And guess what? They know where you're headed. You're going to be right there with them. You stay on that path. You're going to be right. You keep on gossiping. Keep on popping them chops. Keep on howling that you, you keep on howling that you're a child of God. You just keep on. Keep on. You're going to be standing next to them. Is that what you want? Is, is, that, is, 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 is what you're doing worth that? I think I, I think I got, I'm tired. Amen. Okay. Great day in the morning. I ain't reading that other one back there. That's, amen. Let's see. All right, Lord. I, I'm not going to just say I ain't going to read it. You gave it to me. Okay. Uh, <laughs> amen. I'm getting kind of bold up here, you know? Amen. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lord. I repent in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. There's three more. Lord Jesus. It is hot up here. Ain't y'all hot? Sweet Moses is hot up here. Okay. All right. Y'all, he, he feels y'all need this. So here we go. Somebody turn to James 2.26. If it was up to me, I'd be out. James 2.26. Cause I already got this. Y'all the ones that need it. Amen. James 2.26. Y'all ready? As the body without the spirit is dead, so is faith without deeds is dead. Okay, Lord, you're right. They need this. Okay, because that goes along with it. Okay, all right, all right, all right. I got it. Okay, so, <laughs> amen. I talk to my father whenever, he, whenever I, they, so, amen. Just like the body, if your body loses the spirit, you're going to drop like a rock because that's your life. Yeah. If the, if the spirit leaves your body, you go. As the body without the spirit, so faith without deeds. So if you call yourself having faith and you don't have, you don't have any fruit to, to testify on your behalf of the faith that you really have in God, it's dead. D-E-A-D, -E dead. Did I spell that right? Dead. Let's read another. Let's, oh, that was the only version of that. Okay, let's go to Matthew 7 and 16. I hope you're writing these scriptures down because they're good. They're, it's good eating. There's only two left. Thank God. There's only two left. It's been a long day, y'all. Amen. Hey, man, I can't wait to get out of this stuff. Amen. Hey, Matthew 7, 16. Hey, Amen. When you get there. Amen. By their fruit, you will recognize them. I don't care. Listen, I don't care what they chop off and take back on there. I don't care what kind of pills they take. I don't care what they spray paint on. God knows if that's a man or a woman. God, I don't care what you did after market. God knows what it is. Amen. God knows what that thing was when it got here. And you're going to be that when you meet him. Amen, somebody. I don't care who you say called you. Your fruit going to tell the real story. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Your fruit. I'm not talking about the stuff you spew out. I'm talking about the fruit. Because see, whatever's in your heart, yeah. that's what's growing on your tree. Yeah. Yeah. Whoever the true person is, whoever you really are, that's what's growing on a tree. Yeah. It doesn't, you don't have to say anything. Right. Who you really are 
is going to grow on that tree. And people that are that that can recognize fruit will say, ah, oh, that's a pear tree. There ain't no apple tree. You got the spray can now. Spray paint in the pears. <laughs> paint the pears red. But a spiritual person will look at us and say, nah, I ain't never seen an apple look like that. You a pear. You judging. No, I'm looking. You a pear. First thing to jump out their mouth, you just judging. Then you can't judge. Well, I, okay, I, I won't say that. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> just give me a minute. I'll find something. Because <laughs> what I want to say, I'm squeezing the life out of this podium. Because what I want to say, hey, man, let me see. What can I say? Amen. Not nah, anyone I want to say. Amen. Amen. Help us, Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus. All right. Let me read that scripture again. Amen. All right. So, amen. Let's move on. Amen. I'm sure y'all understand a few things go through your own head. All right. Amen. Woo. It got instantly hot up here. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, Matthew. Did I read Matthew 7 16? Oh, no, that was Matthew 7. Okay, uh, uh, by their fruit you will recognize them. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Well, you must think I'm, I'm Johnny, I'm Willie Lump Lump. I, I can't tell the difference from a watermelon patch from an oak tree. You think I don't know nothing. I know where you came from, I know what you are. You are you a pear, you a nut. You are not an apple. Amen. Why? You just know I see the fruit. I see the fruit. I see the fruit. Amen. I did good, right, Jabba? I, I see the fruit. Listen, your fruit going to speak for you. You ain't got to say nothing. Your fruit gonna tell a whole story. You know why every crackhead know you got something in your, in your, in your medicine cabinet? Because they're a crackhead. They know they have something in theirs that they could afford it. And so they figure you must have something. The Bible says, so a man think in his heart, so is he. Yeah. Every liar know you lying. Right. Yeah. Why? Because they're a liar. That's what they do. And they can't fathom a world without you lying. <laughs> Every thief know you done stole something from them, or you will if they turn their back. Yeah. Why? Because they're a thief. Amen. Am I right? Yeah. Every hypocrite know you lying about something. Ain't nobody that saved. No, you ain't that saved. Right. Can't nobody do it. Can't nobody fast no three weeks. No, you can't. Right. Or you won't. Lord Jesus. Oh, one more verse and then I'm done. Where is this verse? Somebody go to James 3.1. That's why I'm only up here once a month. Y'all can't handle me too much. <laughs> Y'all can't handle me. Amen. <laughs> Anybody ready? Amen. Now, many of you, not, N-O-T, not, say what I say, not. not. Not many of you should become teachers. My fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. You who teach, whether God sent you or not, whatever you're teaching, will be judged more strictly than just an average believer or just a believer or someone that's not claiming to be a teacher. Because you claim that you are representing the word of God. God is serious about his word. Yes. And you claim you representing the word of God. Here's another version of that. Dear brothers and sisters, not many of you should become teachers. Not many of you should become teachers in the church. Not the church building, but the church. Period. The church work, the church body. For we who teach will be judged more strictly. Judged. Judged. Last one. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. So if God didn't call you, shame on you. Why you got a chance to repeat, 
repent, you need to do that. Because it said, and I'm going to go back to the message. It said, what did I say? To all teachers and preachers, you better make sure you were called by God. Yes. Amen? Amen? I'm out. Drop the mic. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. We do all right? Amen. 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 Amen.